Hi my friends, welcome to the channel English Professional and this video is key to English prepositions. Really, I believe it's the most important video about English prepositions. And basically, you just need to know yeah, some phrases with prepositions and some rules, yeah, we're going to talk about them at the end of our presentation too. Some patterns. Okay, so at, please my friend, remember, we say at home, at work, at school, at the airport, at university. Then, so different phrases with o'clock, for example, at five o'clock, at six o'clock, at seven o'clock, and so on. Okay, next. At night, at noon, at midnight, at midday. You know, there are other very important phrases with at and we need to know them. The thing is that we don't have enough space here, but no problem, yeah, we have the second part because it's a full version. So the second part, so phrases with at. So we say at the weekend in British English, but on the weekend in American English. At the station, at the top, at the bottom, at the end of something, and at the beginning of something. For example, at the end of the book, at the beginning of the book. If it's without of, so we don't have of, we say in the beginning and in the end, so you need to remember it. Next, at the party, at the moment. So, and we also say at Easter, at New Year and at Christmas. Yeah, remember, at Easter, at New Year and at Christmas. There is one very important rule. If you add day after these holidays, you use on. Like here, look. So, we say on Christmas Day, because you see day, but at Christmas. On New Year's Day, but at New Year. So, at Easter, but on Easter Day, because of this day. It's a rule, it's English grammar, and you need to remember it, okay? Yeah, I hope that's clear. Okay, let's talk about in. So, we say, in the morning, in the evening, in the afternoon. Then, we use in with years, for example, in 1978, in 1999, so in 2015, and so on, so with years. We also use in with months, so in March, in February, in December, in April, in July, and so on. We also use in with seasons. Students often ask me, how should we say in spring or in the spring? And the answer is very simple. It's correct to say in the spring and in spring. It's also correct. So I mostly meet without that. So in spring, in summer, in autumn, in winter. But in there, yeah, with seasons, is also possible. Okay, so, next, phrases like this one. In the 1980s, so in the 1970s, in the 1990s, and so on. Good. What about on? So, we use on with days of the week, or with weekdays. For example, on Mondays, yeah, on Tuesdays, on Wednesdays, on Thursdays, on Fridays, on Saturdays, on Sundays. So, we say on the weekend in American English, 
you know that we talked about it. So we say so at the weekend in British English and on the weekend in American English. So that's so the main difference. All right. So we also say on we also use on with for example on Monday morning, on Tuesday morning, on Wednesday morning and so on. And that's also true about evening. So on Wednesday evening, on Thursday evening, on Friday evening, on Saturday evening. So you need to have this combination. So so day of the week and morning or evening. So next, on my birthday. Yeah, and so we don't need on here and we also actually don't need on here, but that's clear, yeah? So on my birthday. Say on my birthday. Why on? Because of the day, on my birthday, on holiday. So it's the same story like day, yeah? On holiday. So you know that we say holiday in British English and we mostly meet on vacation in American English. So that's the difference between British English and American English. Okay, so we mostly meet on time. So we mostly meet this preposition with time. Yeah. So what about Christmas Day and New Year's Day? So you see it with on because of the day. On Christmas Day, on New Year's Day. Like he like here on Easter Day. But if you don't have day, so you need to say at, at Easter, at New Year, at Christmas. Good, very good. Then we use on with dates. For example, yeah, for example, uh, you see on the 11th of May. How do we pronounce it? How do we pronounce it, really? On the 11th of May, on the 12th of May, on the 13th of May, on the 14th of May, and so on. So many students mispronounce it. So, yeah, so if you try to pr pronounce everything correctly, so for example, I can say that I was born on the 26th of April. So don't forget to use of on the 26th of April. And really, when were you born? You can write, I was born on the 1st of December. I was born on the 2nd of February. I was born on the 3rd of March. I was born on the 11th of, you know, of July. I was born on the 25th of, so August and so on. Okay, good, very good. But you know, we also need to look at the second part. Yeah, we forgot to do it with in. So let's do it with in and on. And we'll have a look at by and for after that. So in, let's continue. So we say in a minute or in a second. For example, I'll be back in a minute. I'll be back in a second. Or you can also say I'll be back in two minutes, in 10 minutes, in 15 minutes. It's also okay. Okay, so we also say in an hour, in two hours, in three hours, so talking about the future. For example, she'll be back in two hours. Okay, next, in two days, in three days, so good. So you can also hear, so in five months, in two years, yeah, so what will be in two years, no one knows, for example. Okay, other phrases with in, in bed, in bed, in hospital, in prison, in the street, in the middle. So in the picture, it's a very important phrase. For example, when you d want to describe a certain picture or a photo, so more students so use this phrase incorrectly. Remember, in, in the picture, in the photo. For example, what do you see in the photo? What do you see in the picture? Only in. Then, in the beginning and in the end. But at the, en but at the end of something, at the beginning of something. In the library. Yeah, and some more phrases with on. So, on the bus, on the plane, on the ship, on the boat, on the train, on the phone on TV or on television or on television so but we mostly hear on TV it's a short form on the radio on New Year's Eve 
on Easter Day, on the right, on the left, on foot. These phrases are very important. So often, you know, students often actually misunderstand this phrase on foot. So how do you usually get to work? So and so you need to say, for example, on foot, on foot. It means that you walk, you walk to work. So with your legs. Okay, right. So what about by? So we say by car. So when we travel somewhere, we say, for example, how do you prefer to travel? By car. So the fundamental difference is that after by, you don't use a preposition. And you say by car, by train, by ship, by plane, by sea, by air, by land. But of course, if you are going to use so, you know, an article, if you're going to use an article, it's another preposition. For example, in a car, so on the train, on the ship, on the plane, so I can swim in the sea, in the sea, and so on. I mean that, so if you don't have an article, yeah, here you use by. So if you have an article, like here, so you say on the bus, on the plane, on the ship, on the boat, on the train, but in a car, in a car, you need to remember, in a car, in a car. If it's without a, so you say by car. So by underground, so you know that we also use by with passive voice. For example, by him, by her, the book was written by him. It means that he wrote the book. The book was written by him. By tomorrow, so talking about deadline, talking about your deadline, for example. So, when do you need to finish it? By tomorrow. It means that, so, not later, not later than tomorrow, not later than tomorrow. So, today is the last day, by tomorrow. Or, for example, let's continue, by next week, by next month, by next year. For example, I need to reach a strong advanced level in English or a strong advanced English level by next month, by next year. Okay, and we also have very useful phrases with for. For a walk. So you can go for a walk. Do you like going for a walk? For a change. For example, we need maybe uh, to record, you know, a video lesson about articles for a change. So if you want to change something for an hour, so I can't say that I've been recording this lesson for an hour, it's uh, much shorter. For two days, so he was away for example for two days, for three weeks, for two months, for five years. So I have been learning English for five years. You note that we often use for with present perfect continuous. Okay, and I think maybe uh, you don't actually see it well, no problem, so I'll make it smaller for you. So yeah, by underground, by him here, by tomorrow, and for breakfast, so for lunch, for breakfast, for lunch, and for dinner. For breakfast, for lunch, and for dinner. So for example, what did you have for breakfast? What do you usually have for dinner? What do you usually have for lunch? And so on. And sometimes you also meet supper. So dinner and supper. All right, so it's a very important thing. So basically, you need to know, yeah, these actually most important cases. So when we use prepositions, but that's not all. There is one more very important and maybe the most important thing. Really, I don't understand why other people don't talk about it. So my aim is to help you is to help you understand how to learn English. So really, the first step is, in, yeah, is that you need to know just these basic phrases and you need to understand, for example, that in means inside, on, just uh, on the surface, for example, by, so we often use with passive voice and other cases, is the first step. But there are other steps, my friends, too. You also need, actually, to know about five more steps if you really want 
to be successful in learning prepositions or if you really want to succeed. So in learning English prepositions and using them effectively in your English conversation. So you need to know different prepositional phrases, different prepositional phrases. You need to know them, you need to memorize them by heart and start with most common ones. For example, at once means immediately, in doubt means uh, I'm not sure, on the whole, in general, by mistake, so it happened accidentally or it wasn't going to happen for a walk. Yeah, we talked about it, so we can say walk or go for a walk. So you need to pay attention to these prepositional phrases. Secondly, you need to pay attention to prepositions with adjectives. For example, good at, I'm good at English, interested in, I'm interested in foreign languages, keen on, I'm keen on music. Then, surprised by or at, you know that we can use surprised with by or at. So, I'm really surprised by your ability to record, I mean, so many lessons of supreme quality. Supreme it means very, very high quality. Verb. So prepositions with verbs like smile at. So she smiled at me. Succeed in. So I succeeded in you know, learning English in a couple of years. So insist on. I insisted on it. So, so I told someone to do it and it happened. Abide by. For example, we need to abide by the rules. We need to abide by the rules. We need to follow the rules. Like, wait for, wait for, wait for me. Then, nouns plus prepositions. Like, look at, it can be a verb, a verb, or it can be a noun. So, let's have a look at, so, the previous slides. Let's have a look at it. Interest in. So, your interest in, so, in this Thing is difficult to explain. Attack on. So there was a sudden attack on so those troops. Troops, yeah? So reason for. So what the reason for doing it? Reason for. Like and the most important thing, so not maybe the most, but one of the most important things about phrasal verbs. It's about phrasal verbs. So really there are lots of verbs with prepositions and we call them phrasal verbs. And they have th these verbs a special meaning. And you also need to know them. Like get at means can mean suggest. What are you getting at? What are you suggesting? Take in. Like deceive. He was taken in. He was deceived. It means that he got into trouble. Put on. So he put on warm clothes. So he had them on his body. Go by. So time goes by. It means time passes. Look for. What are you looking for? What are you trying to find. So, to sum up, my friend, please also pay attention to prepositional phrases and prepositions with different parts of speech, so such as adjectives, verbs, nouns, and my friend, don't forget about phrasal verbs too. It's also a very important part of English grammar. So, really, it's the key to English prepositions. So, you need to understand these things, what you need to learn. My aim is to help you understand what's going on in reality. So not only these phrases with time, prepositions of time, place, not only this, but these things too. Yeah? And uh, actually, it doesn't lie on the surface, but it's of actually of great importance. And this fact is undeniable. We can't deny this fact. Thank you very much, my friends, and I wish you good luck. See you. Bye-bye.